Hi everyone and welcome to a new video on the CBI channel. In this tutorial series we're creating a full stack web application with Python Django in the backend and React.js in the frontend. And in the end our application will look like this, where we have a nice looking navigation menu, records displayed in a table on the homepage and the option to create records, to edit records and also to delete records. Now, this is not the first video in this series. In fact, we've already done 12 before in which we covered a lot of different topics from the initial setup to creating all of the different components we need to fetch data from the backend and bring it to the front end and the ability to create, read and edit records. Now, in this video, we're going to continue and we're going to be focusing on deleting records inside of our application. And to realize that we will follow five steps. We're going to start by creating some functionality that allows us to navigate to the delete page from our homepage. Next, we're going to be applying some styling to the delete page so it looks a little bit nicer. And we're going to make sure that we can fetch the correct record from the backend that we want to delete. Then we need to make some changes to our Django backend because there we need to enable deletion of records. And as a last step, we're going to go back to the front end and make sure that we can make the delete request from the front end to the back end. So if we take a look in our code and then in our front end, you will see that in the source folder and then components, we already have a page called delete.jsx. And currently that only returns this is the delete page. Now, if we go to the app.jsx where all of the pages come together, you can see that similarly to the edit page, the delete page expects to receive an ID. And then based on that ID, we can fetch data from the backend and then make the request to delete that specific record. Now, the first step that I want to take is make sure that we can go to this delete page and get the right ID inside of the URL as a parameter. Now, we've already done this as well in the previous video in the home.jsx page where if we scroll down, we added an icon in a table on our homepage that allows us to go to the edit page. And I've just started the server so we can take a look what that looks like. So now we're inside of our application and you can see that we have this initial button and if I click it, we go to the edit page and it has the parameter right here and it pre-fills this form. So now what I want to do is add a second button and then create the action of the lead which brings us to the correct page for the lead with the ID. Now doing that is actually quite simple. We go to our home.jsx page and we can copy over this icon button right here that we have for editing records. Now the differences that we want to make are first of all the color of the icon because I'm going to set that to error and that's going to make sure that the color will be red so that it has a little bit of a distinction of the button on the top. The component remains a link, but we are not going to go to the edit page and then with the ID, but we actually want to go to the delete page and then have the ID. And as a last step, we currently use the edit icon, but I want to have a delete icon. So what we can do is go to the documentation of material UI and then specifically to the icons. And from here, I'm going to look for delete. And that provides us with this icon, kind of a garbage can, which will suit us just fine. So inside of the home, the JSX page, we can copy in that icon from material Y and then use the delete icon right here. And what this does, it constructs a link, which goes to delete and then to the ID of all of the data that we have in the table, which we created in a previous video. And then we have the delete icon that brings us to that page. So let's save this and see what it looks like. So now we have two icons right there on the page. And if I hover over the delete icon for Nak Breda, you can indeed see on the bottom left that it says delete slash one. So if we go to this one for Manchester City and I click on it, you can see that it brings the ID of four, but it still shows the content of this is the delete page. So let's quickly apply some styling so that it looks a little bit nicer. Now, over the course of this series, we have already created quite some different components uh, and we're going to be reusing those in this video. So in the edit.jsx page, we already have a top bar uh, right here. So we're going to be copying over this top bar as well for our delete.jsx page. And we're going to get rid of what is currently inside of the div. And we just have the top bar right there. And as the text, we can put something in like, are you sure that you want to delete this record? And then after that, we actually only need a box that 
has some kind of a button that triggers the delete. Now, of course, we've used a box and an icon and typography, and they're not in the imports. So we're also going to go to the edit the JSX page. And on the top, we can just get the icons that we have right here. And I'm also going to copy over actually the React part and the Axios instance because I have the feeling that we're going to be needing that later on as well. So now below the initial top bar, we can actually create another box and we're going to apply some styling here. So we do SX and then two times the squarely brackets. And I'm just going to say that we want to have a margin top so that it's not stuck to the top bar. And let's do that of 30 pixels. And in here, I want to create a button. And that button is going to be the confirmation that we want to delete something. Now in the edit page, we've also already created a button on the bottom right here. So I'm just going to copy over this button right here and paste it inside of our delete file so that we have a button with the type of submit and the variant of contained. And this is not going to tell us to submit the data, but delete. And of course, we also need to import this button. So let's put that on the top as well. And now we can check what our page looks like. So currently we have this simple functionality right here where we have this top bar of are you sure that you want to delete this record? And then we have the option to click delete. Now, of course, uh, I want to provide some details on what we're going to be deleting. So what I want to do is fetch the record of ID four on this page so that we can provide some details of what you're actually deleting because you can't really see it at this moment. Now, that whole process of fetching the data we've already done in the edit the JSX page. So also over there, we can just copy over some components. So the first thing that we can take is this constant of data and set my data. And that is the variable in which we store the actual data that we're going to be retrieving. And let's put that on the top of the delete page. Next, we have this get data constant and then the use effect, which actually gets our data and then make sure that we only get it once the page is rendered. So we can copy that over and use that in here as well. And let's fix the indentations because that's all over the place at the moment. And now we can get rid of getting the data for country, league and characteristic because we're only interested in getting the data for football club. Now, similarly as the last video for edit, we actually need to pass in the ID that we see on the top right here to make the request to only retrieve the specific record. So we also need to get that number four from the URL. Now we've also already done that in the last video because we have this use navigate and use params that we need to copy over as the import and put it here in the delete page. And then we can have a constant of my parameter that uses use params to get the actual parameters from the URL and then get the ID by using my parameter and then selecting the ID from that list. So also that part we can copy over. So you can see that a lot of the stuff that we need to do, we've already done that in the previous video. Okay, so we're now able to actually get the ID. We're able to get the data using the ID, making a request to our backend, and then storing that inside of the constant of my data. So let's now quickly check if that works by doing a console.log and say that we want to log my data, which is equal to my data. And now on the console, we indeed see the my data and we get the correct record from Manchester City. So this seems to be working just fine. Now let's make sure that we can get some of that information on the bottom before actually deleting it. So again, from the edit the JSX page, I don't know if we've already created something called form box. So I'm just going to copy that over and put that inside of the delete page between our top bar and the actual delete button. And in here, I'm going to add some typography. And in there, we want to type in some details on what we're going to be deleting. So we can say, you will be deleting the club. And then we can say that we want to provide the information on what the club is called. So we can say my data dot name. Then we can say from, because we also have the city. So we can do my data.city. And then if we save that, 
we should be able to see that right there. So indeed, we have now, you will be deleting the club Manchester City from Manchester. Now, actually, I'm going to be renaming the class name to text box instead of form box. And then in our app.css file, we are going to be copying over the form box and then naming that text box so we can apply some of our own styling. Because what I notice now is that the text is quite close together to the borders and also it's in the middle whilst I actually want it to be aligned left. So let's change the justify content and actually not have it in there at all. And now the text is indeed on the left. Now what I would also like is have some padding so that we have some internal space and let's make that padding 10 pixels. And now you notice that there's a little bit more room between what we have right there. And actually I'm going to increase the padding to 20 pixels because this can actually be quite big. So for me, this already looks a lot better. Now, the last thing that I would like to try is get Manchester City and Manchester in a bold font type, because I think that will look a little bit better and easier to see for the user. So what we can try is put in some strong tags and then put in the mydata.name inside of a strong tag. And let's save that. And now we see that Manchester City is actually in bold. So we can now do the same thing as well, just copy it over and then make that work for mydata.city because that will give it a little bit more of a pop when the user sees it. So now you see, you will be deleting the club Manchester City from Manchester. Now ideally when we click delete, it will delete that record. But in order to enable that, we need to make some changes in the functionality in our backend because currently that is not allowed yet. Because if we go to the backend folder to API and then to the views, you can see that for the football clubs, we've now created functions for listing them down, creating them, retrieving them and updating them. But we still need to add a function for destroying, which basically means delete. So to enable deletion, we can add another function called destroy. And destroy again takes in similar parameters, which are self request and PK is none, which means that by default, the primary key will be equal to none. Then what we need to do is say that the query set is going to be equal to self dot query set, which refers to the query set we've listed at the beginning. And then we can do dot get because we only want to get one single record. And we can say that the primary key must be equal to the primary key. So it goes into our football club model and is going to look up the record that we want to delete based on the ID. Then we can simply do query set dot delete. And then as a last step, we can do a return response with a status equal to 204. And 204 means that it was successful, but nothing is actually returned. And that is correct because we have deleted something. So let's save this. And now in the back end, we can make destroy requests. And now we need to make sure that we can make this delete request from the front end, which triggers this deletion in the back end. So back to the delete.jsx page. So what we now need to do is create a constant that is going to make the deletion request. So we can do a constant and we call that delete record. And that is going to be equal to event which is just going to be the name of the thing that we're deleting. And then we do an arrow function with some squirrely records. Now in here, we are first going to start by doing event.prevent default. And the prevent default actually makes sure that the page is not being reloaded after we make the request, because after we've made the request, our page is going to be deleted. It doesn't exist anymore because we've deleted that ID. So that's why we do the prevent default. Next to that, we can make the request to actually delete the record. So we do Axios instance, which we've also imported on the top already. And that's actually the API mechanism that we've created in one of the previous videos. And we will be doing something similar to the get data, but instead of the dot get, we do a dot delete request because that is what we want to do. And then similarly as the get request, we do some backwards commas and we say that we want to go to the path of football club. And again, we want to include the ID. So we do a dollar sign, then some squirrely brackets, and we provide the ID so that our backend knows what to delete. 
And we also include a trailing slash so that we know that the request is going to be correct. Then we can do a dot then. So let's go one row below and we do dot then, which needs two times the round brackets. And after the first complete set of round brackets, we need to do an arrow function with some squirrely brackets. And in there, we want to use the message again to say that we have deleted something. So what we will do from the edit page is we're going to be importing the my message because that is just some other component that we've already created. And let's import that right there. And then we will also need to have the message and my message constant where we're going to store whether we want to see the message or not. So we're also putting that inside of the delete page. And by default, in the return statement, we will place the message on top of the top bar. So we're going to, on the top of the top bar, say that we want to display message. And you can see in our constant on the top that by default, our message is going to be equal to nothing. But after we have successfully deleted something right here, we're going to be setting the message to something else. So similarly as the edit page, you can see that we over here set the message to the my message with some text and some color. So I'm going to copy over this whole section and even also the timeout and the navigate part and then paste that inside of the dot then statement. And let's fix these indentations as well. And then we can say that the message text is going to be equal to you successfully deleted data in the database. And then after we have shown the message to the user, we're going to wait by using set timeout for 1.5 seconds. And then we're going to navigate to the home page again. And that should then in the end not show the record anymore. Now it's nice that we have this delete record constant, but actually nothing is triggering that at the moment. So what we need to do to trigger that is wrap the return statement in a form tag and then make sure that the form tag that closes it is on the bottom before the last div. And now inside of this form tag, we can say what needs to happen when someone presses the submit button. So we can say that the on submit is going to be equal to, and then we can say delete record. So what will happen is that the user sees this information when they click the button because it has the type of submit, it triggers the unsubmit and the unsubmit triggers the delete record. And in the delete record, we make sure that we don't reload the page because that will not exist anymore after this. We delete the record from our backend database. And then we show the message to the user that states you deleted data in the database. And after 1.5 seconds, we navigate to the homepage. So let's now go to the front end and hopefully this will all work correctly. So let's refresh this page and we now see the record for Manchester City uh, with ID of four. So if we now press delete, we should see a message go to the homepage and not see this record anymore on the table of the homepage. Now we do see the message, but we're not actually navigating to the homepage. And I think I know why that is. Uh, because we have imported use navigate, but we have not put that in a constant yet. And you can see right here that it actually refers to navigate, but that doesn't really exist here. So we're going to go to the edit page and then we can see that uh, in the previous video, I created a constant called navigate, which uses use navigate. So we also need to put that on the top because otherwise it will not work. So let's save this. Now, this record has already been deleted now. You can already see that the data is not shown here. So let's go back to our home page. And you can indeed see that now Manchester City is no longer present here. So let's go to Paris Saint-Germain and click on the delete. And it now says, are we sure that we want to delete this? And we will be deleting Paris Saint-Germain from Paris. And if we now delete it, we see the message. And we now go to the home page and the record is completely gone. And that is all for this video. In this video, I showed you how you can delete records in your Django backend and React.js frontend. In the next video, which might be the final video, we're going to continue and I'm going to show you how we can generate these side menu items from our database and how we can display a table with data that is filtered on this specific category. 
I want to thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. And also, if you have any suggestions to improve this app, let me know. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.